brief stop here. This is BB King Corner in Indianola. BB's favourite corner. On my corner, both the blacks and whites would see me. It wasn't something I planned, it was just like a good fishing place. It seemed like a nice spot to be. You'd find me on the corner on Saturdays and sometimes after I got off work. I never passed a hat, but the people knew that I'd appreciate a dime if I played a tune they requested. Very cool. Who's marker? On this corner with BB was just a young man of 17. But local was first year, the musician destined to become the king of the blues. On June 6, 1980, BB King placed his handprint and signature in the walk. So this is actually Church Avenue. And further on down the road there was another place where BB King would play on the corner, on the street corners, but there's there's not a lot down there. They're mostly boarded up businesses. Just so happens the day when we visit BB King's museum is BB King's birthday. Bring it in balloons just to celebrate his birthday today. When was he born? 1925. 25. You'd be 92. You'd be 92. Yeah. 92 today. So here we are, BB King Museum in Genola. I don't know how much I can film and I won't be able to do a sound because of the music, it's copyrighted, so that's how we get on. So outside is the BB King Memorial Courtyard. Couldn't film or take pictures inside, which has changed since we were three years ago because we took pictures then, didn't we? So maybe I'll put some in to give you an idea. It's basically the same as it was three years ago. Uh, but well worth a visit, highly recommend this one. This is Little Zion Church, just north of Clarksdale, down that way, and south of the little town called Money. So we'll take a stroll to find where Robert Johnson's buried, although he's buried in three different places, apparently. This is where most people believe he is actually buried, here in this little churchyard. Uh, Robert Johnson got his King of the Delta Blues. And here's his grave site. He died in 1938, 27 years old. Late to rest here. Like old Charlie Panton's grave, it's just another another one ticked off the bucket list. I shouldn't say bucket list in the cemetery. But Johnson. Sweet Home Chicago was one of his songs, which uh, a lot of people probably best remember from the Blues Brothers. Blues Brothers one. Okay. Just heading from this little church now, just uh, not far, not far up the road, the little town of Money. Where a very horrific event took place in 1955 that along with the Rosa Parks set in of the same year in December really galvanised the civil rights movement. Just 
up ahead here on the left was the site of Brian's Grocery. I'm not sure what's left of it. It's been uh, just left to rot basically. A 14 year old Emma Till came to this site to buy candy in August 55. White shopkeeper Carolyn Bryant accused the black youth of flirting with her and shortly thereafter Till was abducted by Bryant's husband and his half-brother. Till's tortured body was later found in the Tallahatchie River, just beyond the trees there. The two men were tried and acquitted but later sold their murder confession to Luck magazine pretty soon after the event actually. Till's death received international attention and is widely credited with sparking the American Civil Rights Movement. As I said, that and along with the Rosa Parks bus boycott at the end of '55 did galvanise civil rights. This oh, is, that is literally all that's left of Brian's grocery. So that's it. Brian's Grocery. Just coming up on the Tallahatchie Bridge, which Bobby Gentry made famous in the song. Yeah, they, this was a wooden, a wooden bridge, but it was burned by vandals in the early 70s and this new one was put in its place further down the river south of Clarksdale there was a there was a film made loosely built on the song um, I think it was uh, Legend of Billy Joe something like that um, and that bridge is the one that was used promotional shots of the film but this was the this is the Tallahatchie Bridge just around the corner from Manny, Mississippi. Farms Plantation. What? Dockery Farms Plantation. Many of the blue singers got their start here, or played here at least. Charlie Parton, perhaps the first famous one who mentored Robert Johnson, Howlin' Wolf, Sonny Boy Williamson. Anybody else on here? Take a look around. Uh, Patton plays on the porch of the commissary. Began recorded in 1929. But he died in 1934, so uh, it's just a handful of tracks that we've got for posterity. I believe that over there is the remnant of commissary I believe by all accounts the workers were treated well here and actually the, the owner put on weekend picnics where the likes of Charlie Patton and Robert Johnson would play for the workers and the, the owner would foot the bell basically. There's picnic tables over there. Mm. 
Calgary Farms. It's a press screen button for audio. Ooh. Or documentary f of documentary film. Okay. There's gas pumps. Yeah. Not used in quite a while. The people went to parties, which was just a sharecropper house. And they had arranged with the people to take the furniture out of the house late on Saturday afternoon before dark. They had bought big mirrors for these people, really large mirrors. Uh, those people would then light a coal oil lantern and put it in front of each mirror. And so that house would look like it was just lit up. And then the music would start. All the people on the place could hear that music. And it was pitch black dark. And so they could see this house lit up. So what would you do? You'd get out of your 25 cents and you'd head on over there. Yeah, a lot of these plantations at the time were almost self-sufficient and a lot of less, obviously less scrupulous owners than the likes of Will Dockery and Joe Rice. They had their own po post office and general store where they'd ramp up the prices basically, so the money that the sharecroppers were making would just be ploughed straight back into the business with not a lot left over to live on for this by all accounts was one of the better better ones